So, as we said, we have been deliberating and listening and hearing and um, you know learning about keeping God's holy scriptures. And what does it mean to keep God's holy scriptures? It means we obey them, we follow them, we apply them to our lives. We follow what we have been guided through his Holy Spirit. And we see from reading uh, this passage, uh, Ephesians 4, 1 to 17, that there is a guide. It's like you've been given the instructions, the guidelines. These are the ways to follow. These are the policies. And the policies are that we are to keep God's holy scriptures. They are holy because it is not something that we can say, oh, well, uh, you know, sometimes people have said, oh, this is your opinion. And when it's because we don't fear God anymore, you know, we don't have the fear. When a minister is saying any word, at least let us ask God, whatever the minister says, if it is something that is not, uh, you know, compatible with our thinking, what we should do is to pray for God to allow the minister to change course, to correct what has been said. But if we say, oh, well, that's your opinion, then there is no respect. Uh, we know in the past things uh, have uh, been given in the Old Testament what was said. It used to be, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. In the New Testament, we don't see much, uh, just a few, I uh, think the Apostle Paul a few times said, uh, you know, this I receive from the Lord, especially the uh, Passover, he, you know, when he talks about it, and a few others. So we should realize that in the Old Testament, the prophets were speaking on behalf of God because God had given them that instruction, those words to use. It became the oracles of God. And so in our case, in the New Testament, Christ is speaking directly. So every word that we see there and every word, for example, what we've uh, already enumerated on, expanded on, or exposed, uh, expanded on doing the expository, it is something for us to consider and ask God, Lord, this is difficult, but you are the one who can help us to understand. And so keeping God's word means that obeying God's word. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was the, uh, you know, giving the final uh, discourse with his uh, apostles, he commanded them, you know, if you say you, are, uh, you love me, you keep me, you are doing all this, then you shouldn't just say, oh, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in him and all that. He says, if you love me, keep, obey my commandments. Anyone who says he's, uh, he loves Christ but he doesn't want to keep his commandments, then uh, he's, uh, he has to you know, consider himself. Just as we mentioned about the donations, we pay our tithes to God, right? But why do we want a man to give us the refund? You know, something to consider. Keeping God's word allows us to live in obedience to his will or live under the direction of his Holy Spirit because through his Holy Spirit, when we pray, when we trust him, when we believe in him, the Holy Spirit is not going to give us uh, the wrong teaching and say, oh, uh, do this wrong thing, do that wrong thing, or do this thing. We only know the person, the person who is always, or uh, yeah, the person who is always uh, causing problem is the devil, Satan, and his evil spirit. And the devil's desire is to what? Deceive, to steal, to kill, to do all those things. But God doesn't deceive us. There's nothing like that. He wants us to obey. When we surrender ourselves to God, we're able to enjoy uh, the benefit. So in Ephesians 4, 1 that we have read and following, you know, 
he has given us the guidelines of what we are to do. And that uh, verse 2, with all lowliness and uh, meekness and, and long suffering, bearing with one another. It's something that we're supposed to do in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. And this is the Holy Spirit. If we are doing anything and we are antagonistic, we are all of those things. And it is not the Spirit of God. Only the evil spirit causes all those things. And so we have to ask God uh, to help us so that we keep and follow what God has said. You know, whatever the case, you know, let us inculcate the habit of praying more, praying, praying for me, praying for our brother, praying for our leader, praying for our sister, praying for other people. And uh, let us make that effort that what we are doing is we are doing it because of God. One body, one Holy Spirit, one hope. And why are we doing that? Because we have one faith in the one Lord. And there's one baptism, which is baptism under the water. And the Holy Spirit then uh, picks up and does the rest. One God, one Father of all, and uh, above all, and through all, and, and in Him. And so uh, the whole idea, again, is that we need to ask God to help us. And when we are obeying God, then we are walking in the Spirit. How do we walk in the Spirit? Uh, we walk in the Spirit when we have accepted what the Word of God has said and everything is uh, being uh, followed. First John 5, uh, 3 says... For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So when we are keeping, anytime we say keep, of course, there's another meaning for keep. But in this context, when we say keeping God's commandments, it means obeying, obeying his holy scriptures. Obeying them allows us to enjoy all the benefits and the, and the blessings that uh, we need. And then he follows again the Apostle John. Uh, the Apostle John in uh, his second epistle also says that uh, Second John 2 and 6 says, And this is the love, that we walk after his commandments. So you can keep, you can obey, you can walk. These are all part and parcel of the same thing. And this is a commandment that as ye have heard and walk uh, from the beginning, we should also walk in it. You know, uh, it means that people say that you walk, uh, talk the talk or walk the talk, whatever they say, you know, when you say you are doing something, make, let's see the proof. Let's see the evidence. And when we have uh, the evidence, it means that we are following what God's word has said. In Galatians 5, uh, we also know we've heard it, we've read it, and it says, uh, why, you know, if we are controlled by God's Holy Spirit, what we say, what we do, will always be because we are keeping his scriptures. When we are keeping and obeying the scriptures and we are obeying God, we are obeying Christ, and this is uh, his uh, desire for us. Of course, uh, we know from all that we have been reading, uh, again, here in this case, Galatians five sixteen and following, you say, this, is, this I say then, walk in the spirit, obey the spirit, obey what the spirit says, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. 17, for the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye are led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. And then uh, uh, finally, what I will uh, also uh, read uh, from Romans 8, it's something that uh, has uh, stuck with me. And so uh, we should also ask God to help us. 
Romans 8 and 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, which means you are under God's Holy Spirit. If so, there's a condition. We shouldn't say everybody is a Christian and so they are, listen, you know, somebody may be, but they may not have the full, you know. Here it says, but if ye are not in the flesh, but again, let me read verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, which means you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. And this is the second part, which is important for everybody. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And this is something that we should, uh, you know, go home with. You may be a Christian, but if any man or woman does not have the spirit of Christ, where you have surrendered your life, you have believed, you have done everything, then you are none of his. And we pray that that will not be our portion in the wonderful name of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for what he has uh, given to us and that we uh, know we spent uh, time on the quiz. It was for a purpose uh, just to have us uh, uh, clarify, but uh, it was worth it. And so we thank God again for what he's brought to us. And I will pray that uh, the Lord will continue to guide us and prepare us so that we will be uh, ready in season, out of season, uh, to keep, to obey, to follow God's commandments. Uh, again, we thank God. Let us now sing. We'll sing the first uh, hymn.